In this video, I will be having a conversation with Jean-François Tremblay of CanLab to discuss the future of peptides. Hey guys, welcome back to the Danny Bossa podcast. I'm joined today with a very good friend of mine, Jean-François Tremblay of CanLab. Jean-François is one of the world's leading experts in peptides. And how are you doing, Jean-François? Um, very good. You? We're very good too. So, uh, Jean-François, I wanted to have you on because we've done a number of uh, videos on the uh, TRT and Hormone Optimization uh, YouTube channel. It's been quite a while since I've, I've spoken to you. Uh, mm -hmm. at least on this on YouTube in regards to the subject. Um, there was a time when I was kind of hearing a bit in the news of uh, maybe FDA, Health Canada, cracking down on peptides, and the, the whole situation was kind of a little bit up in the air. Uh, and I know there's been a lot of new discoveries in regards to peptides, so I wanted to kind of get your take. Where are we headed right now um, in regards to peptides? What do you see the future of peptides being at this point uh, in point in time? Look, uh, I, had a few, <laughs> I had a few doctors and very well-known doctors in the U.S. to ask me the same questions. And basically, you know, that they, they, they do therapies with peptides. And they asked me, you know, that same question. And basically my answer was, well, start to look for a location in South America, Mexico to uh, continue those practices. A bit like stem cells and... Um, Exosomes. Right now in the U.S., um, the FDA, FDA allows the use of some stem cells mm -hmm. and exosomes, right? Uh, 1st of January, I believe, uh, then, no, exosomes won't, will be prohibited in the U.S. So they, they, they For just keep... For any specific keep, reason? Uh, or yeah, of course. It works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that is a good reason. Anything that seems to work... Uh, it works yeah. too well, so it's a it's a threat to uh, big pharma. Basically, wow. it comes down to that. Uh, FDA uh, has uh, what's the word? Kind suffer, of a stranglehold on the suffer the the, the heavy heavy lobbying from uh, pharmaceutical companies, and uh, there you go. And it couldn't even just have been. Uh, you can use. Exosomes are still legal as long, you know, but highly controlled and you can only use, you know, FDA approved clinics and doctors certified by no, us, blah, 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 blah. No, no, that Not was that. Uh, kind of tolerated up to now and now they decide that they're putting an end to it. And with peptides, I, I see that eventually happening. Uh, really? In term, okay, in term of uh, medical practice, doctor. Actually, they they did it during COVID. There is that doctor that did one post on Facebook, where he claimed that thymosin alpha one cures uh, COVID. Mm -hmm. A month after the FDA, and that's one peptide that was sold in pharmacy. It was approved for other conditions and sold in pharmacies in the U.S. Very, very expensive, but nonetheless sold. And the FDA went back on that approval and they actually went as far in California to say that any doctor using it at this point would lose his license. And I think, and they couldn't buy, they, they prohibited, uh, oh, the compounding pharmacies that would compound it Mm -hmm. for those doctors if they would ship it to california they would lose their compounding pharmacy license and was it strictly because he said it was a potential cure for covid or yeah. they just wanted yeah that that that's what triggered the whole thing okay and and that trigger a change of law in in term of uh, the definition of peptides where they decided that anything over 40 amino acids uh, was uh, falling in the category of biological, oh, they call okay, it, like just like that. HCG. Yeah. And so HCG, thymosin beta-4, uh, 
So, you know, slowly they're squeezing, squeezing. They try to find ways around to stop at least the med medical applications. Now, there is always, you know, you can buy them online and do your own thing with them. Uh, that's going to take longer, but uh, eventually they're going to crack down on that too. You know, they, they go you step by step. You mean research chemicals? That's right. They, okay. They're going to crack down on that too eventually. Okay. And the reasoning, like, I understand it's because they work, but what is the reason, like, when asked, why are you banning this? What is the reason they give? Not enough support, uh, studies. Uh, okay, but I can go um, smoke two packs of cigarettes right now, and they're like, yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, that's a paradox of our, our governments. Yeah. So all the stuff that can kill us is illegal and the stuff that could potentially help us, yeah, you can't have that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see a lot. <laughs> Alcohol. You know, the two most uh, harmful drugs, basically, and it's hard to find something unless there's straight up poison that's going to kill you like arsenic, but uh, they're sold legally and the money, the government is making money out of them. That's tobacco and alcohol. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's it's crazy. Well, there's tobacco, there's alcohol, there's high sugar drinks, there's processed foods, there's yeah. fast foods, there's uh, you can, uh, can make a long those laundry things. list of all the stuff that shouldn't even be allowed. Mm -hmm. But we can buy as much of those. It's completely uncontrolled. Mm -hmm. Buy, purchase, and consume to your heart's content. But if you want some, you know, vitamin C at a higher dose, no, you can't have that. That's toxic. Vitamin D a higher than a thousand AU is toxic. Can't have pregnenolone. You can't have DHEA. Now they're cracking down on NAC. NAC. In the US. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how f fast that's gonna happen. But see, that's another thing. It's like an antioxidant. Like you know, it's, yeah, it's dangerous. Can't have that. I go smoke two packs of cigarettes. It's fine. Yeah, that's no problem. Yeah. So, hey. so basically, the future right now, the way the, it's not very bright. And uh, I know there are movements of uh, doctors. They try to associate, to raise money, and to do their own lobbying. But I don't see it really happening. It's even if you throw in millions of dollars, in in it's still very little compared to what uh, is done at the uh, upper levels. And is it strictly North America, like U.S. and Canada, like the rest of the well, world? Well, Canada, still... Canada and Europe, they, they have their own legislation, totally independent. Uh, lobbying is by far not as big in, in, in Canada or Europe. Still exists, mm -hmm. but to a much smaller degree. But still, they have a tendency to follow what the U.S. does. Yeah. Okay, so outside of Europe and outside of US and Canada, the rest of the world will probably just get along fine being able to buy it and sell it. Um, yeah, for those of the ones in, in the US and Canada. I, I, I mean, frankly, I mean, you know me, I, I, I buy a lot of peptides off of you. Mm. Uh, we use it for everything here. Uh, last week, uh, my wife Angie had a, 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 a tendonitis in her wrist that was just insane. Mm. And uh, we didn't have any uh, peptides. Well, not, not the specific one that I get from you, which is the thymosin uh, frag one through four, which is like a, a, a really, really major anti-inflammatory. Mm. We didn't have any. And she's taking Robaxacet and ibuprofen, whatever, for a full week. And I said, I'm just going to order some of that. And uh, she takes that the next day. It's like, blam. It's gone. Uh, yeah. It's gone. And she's, yeah, fixed. No side uh, effects, and, and uh, to the contrary to all those drugs, ibuprofen, you know, ibuprofen damages the, 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 the kidneys. Mm -hmm. Not to a big extent, but, you know, if you take a lot for a long time, yeah. there yeah. are people who end up in uh, doing dialysis yep. for abuse of ibuprofen. Yep. Tylenol uh, hurts the uh, liver. Uh, so if you take peptides like that that are anti-inflammatory and... Uh, they're, they're going to be good for those organs. They're going to help. So, you yeah. know, it's uh, that. That's uh, for those who don't know much about peptides. Uh, let me. I, I I could explain a couple of things that what yeah, makes them different than 
drugs, for example, medications, yeah. is that with some exceptions, most peptides don't force their action. Drugs do. The best example is uh, hyper uh, uh, anti uh, hypertensive drugs. You have hypertension, you take the drug, tension goes down. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't have hypertension and you take the drug, th you don't need to bring it down, but because of the drug, it will go down and you're mm -hmm. going to be hypotensive. Right. You, so that's what I mean by forcing an action. You know, it yeah. does it, it's going to make it happen, whatever right. your condition. Right. Peptides, no, they have anti-inflammatory uh, effects, they have uh, healing effects. Uh, so... But um, angiogenetic uh, effects, you know, they increase vascularization. But when and where it's needed only, meaning that if you don't have, uh, you take a, a, a peptides like thymosin beta-4 or uh, BPC-157 that will mm -hmm. help to uh, build ligaments mm -hmm. if it's here uh, injured, you won't see an overgrowth of ligament right. by taking uh, those peptides. No, because it's not needed. It's going to work where it's needed, where there is an injury. Then they're going to concentrate there and have their action. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that That's a topic, too, that, you know, it's, it's a bit deep now, but there is a couple of those two peptides, some people, they think that, oh, but if you have a cancer, you shouldn't take them because you increase vascularity, yeah. right? And you don't want that with a cancer. Well, no. Uh, it turns out that, again, the, the only studies where they see uh, increased vascularization force, like in any tissues, it's it's they take let's see uh, let's say uh, a piece of muscle and they throw it in a petri dish, and they kind of keep it semi alive and it's injured and they throw in the peptide, so of course you're gonna see angiogenesis. A little poor piece of muscle is is dying, so it's gonna take everything it can to help it you know regenerate and work. Right. So it, it's not that it's happening all the time it's happening in this because it's needed uh we don't see hyper vascularization from taking those peptides otherwise that would be the perfect uh, they, they would be the perfect compound for athletes uh they are compounds that do that they force their drugs that they force that uh, angiogenesis mm -hmm. those peptides they don't force it if you need it it's gonna happen if you don't need it it won't happen gotcha so and and by uh, seeing uh, by experience of a lot of practitioners who use them in cancer cases, the no, they didn't increase the cancer. You would see a decrease in any form of cancers, even those that say no, the no, uh, no, it uh, it doesn't promote cancer. Has there been any study on, on, I imagine there hasn't been any specific peptides that work on cancers or work on cell proliferation or, or whatever else? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. There, there are peptides that stop uh, cancerous uh, pro, uh, proliferation. There are peptides that kill cancer cells without damaging the same cells. Uh, there are peptides that, like thymosin alpha-1, that increases uh, your... Uh, immune system so to say it they, it they work a bit like um, adaptogen so if something is too high it's going to bring it down if something mm -hmm. is too low it's going to bring it up so it does that with the immune system time as in alpha one it's going to bring your system, uh, immune system where it should be and then being where it should be it's able to fight against the cancer okay and it works uh, because thymosin alpha-1 has two properties. It it actually works like increase the immune system and the, the cancerous cells have like kind of a shield around them that makes them invisible to the immune system. Thymosin alpha-1 break, yeah, breaks it. that shield down. So it makes it visible and procure 
uh, a sane or efficient immune system to 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 do what it's supposed to do. It's the perfect uh, immuno uh, uh, therapy for cancer, okay. and it's all natural. It's your own immune system that jumps in. So you use a combination of you know one that kills the cancer cells, or use one that your own immune system attacks it. Uh, you have pretty sometimes spectacular results. Amazing. It's funny yeah. earlier you were mentioning um, the abuse of a certain medication like Tylenol. Mm. There's people that abuse it. They're constantly taking aches and pains and they're taking a dozen pills a day until it completely wrecks them and they go, but we're mm. not taking th Tylenol off the market. But then something like testosterone is a controlled substance because they say, well, then people are going to abuse it. It's funny how they pick and choose which things that can be abused, which they're going to mm. leave legal and which ones they don't. And, and, and the funny thing, you know, it's a bit of a political statement, but, you know, in the, uh, uh, anti, uh, in the abortion campaign, you know, and it's the same people. Uh, they go around saying, oh, my, bo my, my body, my, my choice, body. right? But when it comes to those things, no, it's not your choice anymore. So, you know, they apply to some things, but not to other things. Anyway, that's, that's politics and we shouldn't get into that, but. Yeah. So know, at this they, point, they, is it just a matter of, you know, having labs outside of North America, outside of Europe, having them? Well, uh, sadly, yeah, it makes the whole thing more expensive to, if you want, like, through uh, therapies, you will have to travel to those places to uh, okay. to have treatments, and then buying them. If even if the lab is in South America somewhere, and you're in Canada, just buying them, you won't be able to get them across the border and whatever else. So we'll be uh, yeah, completely well, cut off from them. You're gonna have to stock up. <laughs> and they, I mean, they when frozen, they keep for quite some time, right? Very long time. What's a very long because time? Because again, like okay, because okay, peptides they do degrade with time, but it's not like milk. You know, you have milk, you leave it on the uh, on the table. Mm -hmm. It's good. It's good. It's good. And poof, it's bad. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> so uh, that, that doesn't happen with peptide. It's not like they're good. They're good. And poof, no, it's no yeah. good anymore. Now, like gradual reduction in. Uh, uh, it's it's a very slow. Of course, if it's at room temperature under the light, the sun, worst, then yeah, you're gonna see uh, a degradation, right? But if you keep it in the fridge. Uh, it degrades ver like we did uh, actually studies on a few to see and you we would see maybe half a percent degradation over the course of a month oh, okay. so Put so you, you let's it say you go longer? from 99.3 to 89 uh, to 98.8 right mm -hmm. 0.5 percent Clinically, it won't make a difference. You know, you use it, you use it after a month, you're going to get the same effect. It's too small to see, oh, it's, I, I feel it less. Now, to feel it less, it would have to degrade to maybe 60%, 70%. Then, yeah, you would start to, ah, it's weak. <clears throat> but to, to get to the, their point, and, and I, I'm talking reconstituted peptides in water kept in the fridge. No, if it's oh, not you're talking, okay, you're talking. Yeah. I'm so talking now, about... if you keep it in the freezer, unreconstituted, so yeah. in the dry form, yeah, and with the vials, uh, you know, they're they're under they're under uh, vacuum sealed, vacuum sealed, so there yeah. is no hair, so no, it can, they cannot oxidize. You're looking at years and years; it's gonna stay. As it is, you won't. Are we talking see. five years? Are we talking fifty years? Are we talking? Well, fifty. I don't know. I don't think anybody looked at it this way. But looking at the curves, me, I would be very confident to use it. And I'm. Pre I, it never happened, but I'm pretty sure. You know, like educated guess, that after ten years, it wouldn't have degraded enough to see a clinical uh, difference. You, they would be fully potent. Okay. And like you said, if and if you wait twenty years, so just just to make an exaggeration, the potency might go down. You just take more of it, and you know, so and, taking five and, all, a all little double. more, maybe yeah. ten percent at that point more. Yeah, sure. and that, okay. that that would cover it big time. Guess who's be, who's going to be placing a big order with CanLab? 
<laughs> Actually, to any of you guys watching, um, I got a little agreement set up with uh, Jean-Francois. If ever you want to get peptides and you want to get them through his site, which is canlabsciences.com, it's still scanlabsciences.com, right? It's still, yeah. Yeah. Um, you can save 10% if you buy anything. You just put a coupon code BOSSA10, so B-O-S-S-A-1-0. BOSSA10, put that coupon code at checkout, and you're going to save 10% right off the bat. So, and you recently just changed the site, I think, to put all U.S. dollars. Yeah, no, all our prices are, because, you know, Americans are Americans. So they would see the prices in Canadian and they would say, oh, it's expensive. No. Many times we had to explain, no, there, there is a tw about 25% difference. So. so you're from Montreal, where I'm from. You're That's from right. Québécois. So. And you're going to please the Americans and piss off the Canadians. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mo most of the, the 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 peptide companies are in the U.S. They have U.S. prices, and they would think our prices were higher uh, than okay. when most of the time they're a bit less okay. because we do produce them. You know, we don't have any intermediaries; they're made here. The and, no and, we're, and, and we're not that greedy. So you know, between I'm not saying they cost the same as those Chinese ones, but the quality is, it's another planet. But they cost more than what they would cost to get them in China, but there is still like to make a, a reasonable profit. Not Those people who get them that from China, they, they make crazy profit because it's dirt cheap over there. Yeah. Right. But you get what you pay for, basically. Okay. So the fact that it's now, I mean, we're probably getting not getting to what well, we're slowly approaching the end of the line potentially in North America. Um, in the rest of the world, are you seeing new clinical applications, new stuff they're doing, new discoveries, new uh, things that we you know, really you know where a lot of, of research is starting to emerge in the peptide China? <laughs> okay, <laughs> they're, they're, they're doing a bunch of research. Actually, they okay, for example, time is in alpha one. Uh, they came up, and that's where it came. You know, that doctor, he saw that study where they took a group, two group of people that had COVID, and basically they were in uh, hospitals with respirators. I mean, they were on the verge of dying, basically, okay. like the, the worst case scenario. So they put a group of timers in Alpha 1 for 10 days, and... Uh, they decrease the in the group that didn't receive it 30 percent actually died versus in the group that received the time as an alpha one only 11 percent died so that's a threefold difference in in death and i believe they could have saved many more if they had continued to give it to them. But you know, when you do a study, you establish the protocol before. Right. They say, we're gonna do this and see what happens. So that's what they did. If they had continued to give it to them, probably they would have seen an even better outcome. And was it just that this study wasn't recognized in North America or was it, like if there's studies for it, why are they still? <sighs> It's it's Chinese, it's Russian, it's like it's not, it's it's not, not made in the U.S., North America. Like it's not good. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Um, and what about in regards to you know, I'd I'd like to. I, it's maybe kind of a silly question, but if this was not gonna, if we weren't necessarily getting to the end of the line. Yeah. Um, let's just assume Health Canada and FDA just evaporate. They, they, they blow up uh, then oh, up smoke. at this I'm point, not, I'm not saying bomb the FDA guys. I'm just, mm. this is yeah, just, that's just what, what, they, yeah. you wake up one morning and they've just magically vanished. The way right? I see it right now, at least you would go see a doctor right now. And from what I know, 70% of what they would prescribe would be peptides. At least. And I would say eventually, not right now, because they're just in the process of mapping everything and uh, the microbiome. Mm -hmm. I, I would say then eventually 90% of prescription would be a combination of peptides and uh, probiotics. 
Okay. Or their byproducts, not their stuff. That's what I'm saying. You know, it's a bit like the uh, when they map the uh, genome, human genome. They say, oh, that's it. Now we know what's happening. And they thought they had it about 20 some years ago. And then they realized, oh, it doesn't work like that. Uh, epigenetic came, the expression of genes. They say, okay, mm -hmm. you may have the gene for something, but it may be turned on or off depending uh, on external factors, diet, lifestyle, sleep, whatever. Pretty much everybody knows about it now. And then they started to look at that and it came down to it. So I, that, that I see that's pretty much what's happening now with the microbiomes. They, they, they found like thousands of uh, uh, bacteria. And at the beginning, they say, that's it, you know, now, but no, there, there are interactions between those uh, bacteria. And you may have a good bacteria, be, but because of uh, bad surrounding, what you eat mostly, uh, but it can't go further than that. It could be uh, hormonals. Uh, th there are so many factors that affect them. Uh, then they don't. They won't have the same byproduct. Uh, to make it clear, basically what they poop, that's what okay. has the actual effect. It's not the bacteria itself, but it's it's poop <laughs> inside your poop tube. So. Uh, so depending what you feed those bacteria, they will have different poop. So now they're starting to look into, okay, so what about, let's look at the poop because that's the real, the actual end product. So eventually we may not look into uh, probiotic uh, therapies, but uh, like butyric acid is one of the byproduct to give you an example. Of, uh, are they able, they're are they able to take a stool sample and analyze the microbiome in the stool sample and determine what ratios of different types of bacteria? Well, they they're, 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 they're into that, but it's amazingly complex. But, you know, with computers and all that, you know, uh, they, they, they'll figure it out. But it's going to take, I mean, I see because everything happens so fast. Now, maybe a couple of years, two to five years, and they will have it down uh, pretty clear. Should everyone simply be taking probiotics no matter what? Yeah, it doesn't hurt. But it's like anything else. You can take yeah, yep. peptides. You can take probiotics. If your diet is shit and you don't exercise, you know, they are basic. Your sleep hygiene is, you know, you sleep like five hours a night and, you know, you... Yeah. Uh, you, you get drunk every weekend and you don't train and you go to McDonald's three times a week. And you understand Th yeah. that affects your epigenetic, but it affects your bacteria too. So my, it, my, it affects when, 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 when they poop. Along the lines of a typical healthy guy. Someone, let's say just something like myself, I take yeah. care of myself. I eat well, I <laughs> and, mm. and all this kind of stuff. Should I just be taking probiotics by default or would it, could it potentially yes. throw off the balance yes. of the microbiome I have? Yes. No, no. In, in those cases, the, the, the better suggestion is, yeah, you take them, but uh, many times it's uh, to repopulate or to get the population of those bacteria that you, <coughs> you don't know if you have them or not, but just to be sure. So you take, you take them for a month. Once okay. they're repopulated and your whole um, lifestyle permits them to survive mm -hmm. and, and live and be happy, <coughs> then you're good. They're going to reproduce and they're going to stay there. Gotcha. So, uh, but let's say you have a bad cold, uh, you get diarrhea, so you kind of empty yourself. You may lose some of the good ones or a lot of them. So, you know, maybe a, a short course, three, four weeks of uh, the main known probiotics could be uh, useful or they say, okay. uh, or antibiotics. They, they have a tendency to kill those bacteria too. So, you know, to repopulate. Gotcha. But not so, not uh, all year round. I don't see the necessity of it. So it's just getting. It would have gotten to the point like you were saying that most stuff would just be done by peptides, uh, which is why the pharmaceutical. Well, no, are there, probably, there, there are good drugs around too. You know, I, I, uh, uh, that's why I study 
pharmacy and pharmacology and you know i'm not against drugs but what i and they are very good and ones around and uh but for very specific situations but you know for general things like you said if you have a a, a tear ligament or this or that or even mm -hmm. you know even for cancer or all kind of therapies the 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 dwarf any medication that exists right now for those uh now what's therapies. funny is if you do tear a ligament and you go to the hospital by tore a ligament they'll say okay well take some ibuprofen to, for the the swelling and the, yeah. and the discomfort and pain and you're gonna have to wait for it to heal there's nothing anything they're gonna prescribe to say take this and it's gonna cut your healing time in half no they have nothing no 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 it's no. uh it's such a funny, funny world we live in sometimes when you just look at <laughs> different aspects of things like, so this is allowed, that's not allowed. We can do this, but we can't do that. And when you kind of lay it out sometimes on paper, you're just looking at it and like, but this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't sense. add up. It doesn't It add doesn't. It's I'm, like uh, uh, yeah, talking, uh, and it all comes down to politicians, basically. Yeah. Again, you know, and that's what they say. Now, there, soon there are going to be elections in Canada, in the U.S. eventually, and you're going to have those same people that made a lot of people lose their jobs, and now they're going to try to keep theirs as for the elections and you know they're gonna ask those people that lost their jobs because of their politics to help them keep their jobs mm -hmm. that that yeah. that's that's how fucked up sorry that's how no you can it's fucked that's up that's how fucked up it is <laughs> the way to say it it's fucked up yeah i completely agree yeah yeah, uh, I know we're anyway. not on we're not on CNN, so don't worry about yeah. it. Yeah, no, it's hard it's hard not to drift toward that political side because you know the, your question, it comes down to that to, to that whole politics and not only the one you see what's happening behind be yeah behind which is a lot broader and deeper and yeah yeah, yeah. follow it's the money always follow the money gotta get involved in look what they did with uh, oxycodone that that that's the funniest story. Well, that's why, you know, it's for, I don't know, 20, 25 years, they were prescribing oxycodone, a whole generation of addicts, right, uh, on oxycodone. And one day they say, no, 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 they have to stop, bang. And people who had been 20 years, and it was helping them, really. They're not like drug, not all drug addicts. It did help a lot of people. They decide to cut it off. And... Uh, and then a pharmaceutical company comes up with some drugs that helps you to get off oxycodone. You know who that com what company that is? What? It's the same company that makes the oxycodone. <laughs> I, I swear. And I so, assume that the cost was more expensive than the actual oxycodone? Yeah, because in the US, uh, you know, 25% of any market in the world on the planet is in the US. So that's why all those things happen there mostly because you have the US market, you have 25% of the world market. So they concentrate there primarily. So basically, yeah, follow the money. So they say, okay, we cannot make money with this, now we'll make with that. And everybody's happy. Yeah. And and if you heal somebody, then you lose a healed customer is a lost customer. They want somebody that will be dependent on your medication for the rest of their lives. Yeah. One of the expressions I use constantly is a sick population is a profitable one. Of course. And I tell that to some people and they're like, no, it's not. It doesn't work that way. And I just kind of... Oh, no, it does big like, time. I can and, make and, you a and, list of 100 and, items of evidence to back myself and up. And it's here. so... It's profitable for some people, but it's not profitable for the society. Right. A healthy population is profitable because they can work. They they don't use up the medical system, expense, you know, the whole thing. Yeah. They can produce. They, they don't care about that. They can innovate. They can create. They can... Yeah. Crazy. What are you gonna do? Crazy. Okay, so, so let's uh, come back to peptides. Uh, <laughs> uh, so yeah, peptides. Again, I, uh, 
uh, because you were asking me earlier what if there are new developments. Uh, there, 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 there are a few. Uh, we try not to come up with a new or one or two new peptides every month. And you're, you're I coming up with one or two every month. Uh, new ones, yeah. Oh, wow. Like for example, I was talking about uh, time is in alpha one, and now but, we're making. Sorry, when you're saying you, we, uh, when my you're company, saying you come up, your company. Oh, I, I do. Or... I do the research, okay. and then okay. Oh, that's uh, that peptide looks really interesting. I look into it, and if it's that interesting, then we make it. Uh, that's why there are peptides. We go on our website. Uh, you'll see peptides that nobody else sell. You know why? because they don't make them in China, so they cannot get them. Gotcha. So <laughs> we're the only one basically on the planet where you can get them from. Uh, so like that time is in alpha one uh, derivate where the uh, you add a little chain of amino acid to it. And it makes uh, the, the time is in alpha one retain all its properties because it has many. It does repair nerves and tissues, but not as much as thymus and beta-4. So that's why you don't use it for those purposes. But it maintains all those properties, but it boosts the uh, anti-cancer properties by about tenfold. So if you use it for uh, cancer, then that's the one you should use, not gotcha. the normal thymus and alpha-1. If it's just the normal you know it's gonna bring up your immune system as the other one it's gonna do everything as the other one but the specific anti-cancer cancer because we don't know all of it yet exactly how it works but there are many studies where they gave time as an alpha one and they saw all those effects on cancer beyond what i said before uh, so those effects, even though we're not sure exactly, or we have just pieces of it, uh, are boosted big time, tenfold. So that that's a new one we came up with. Uh, we came up with uh, last month, I think, two new ones. They don't even have names. It's E W something. They are three amino acid peptides. Uh, they are both really good for uh, hypertension, actually. And uh, okay, that's that's something about peptides. So it's the the smallest peptides, and I'm talking two, three, four amino acids, very small, seems to have the most profound effect in the body. So uh, and and uh, why? When you think small peptides, you're meaning it's not quite a. It's are a very you, short. Let's say taking like a frag of the thymosin. Yeah, for example, uh, and okay, the theory behind that, and it's proven with some, but now we're starting to assume it kind of works for all those very small peptides. Uh, probably many of your listeners will have heard about epitalon, right? Which mm -hmm. is a very small peptide, four amino acids, has been. It was uh, discovered over 40 years ago in Russia, a bunch of human studies. And over the years, they realized that it works, the way it works, it uh, introduce, because it's so small, it's able to introduce itself within the nucleus of, of the cell, and it attaches to the DNA chain at a very specific spot. And it makes the DNA chain dilate a little, so to say, in that area, mm -hmm. which somehow increases the expression of the genes that are in that area. Okay. And that's the expression of those genes, positive expression of those genes that brings about the effect of those peptides. So with the pitalon, it's a lengthening of uh, the telomeres, for example. But, you know, the, there are studies where the looked at uh, a dozen of markers like uh, melatonin level strength uh, bone retention and basically all the markers they looked at and that was done in an older population between 60 and 80 all those markers were back to youthful level and this because, is a, a course of uh, how long of a period of time 
Well, it turns out it's uh, oh at the time. Okay, like, with, I mean, the therapy it's safe. They, they would take the peptide over uh, thirty days. Over uh, they would do ten days courses twice a, twice a year for three years, and then after they stop after three years. Ten ten days. Ten days. Uh, ten days in a row. Yeah. Twice a year. Ten days in a row, twice a year. Got it. Okay. Yeah. For three years. So they did six courses of the peptide. Then they looked after 10 years, seven years more, what happened. And that's where they saw those results. Even seven years after they stopped using it, they saw those youthful levels. Mortality in that group of 60 to 80 was decreased by 67%. And was this at some like ridiculously high dose that typical people won't take? No, ridiculously that... small like, amounts. Such as, do you recall the amount just that? <clears throat> okay, if it uh, they were using the uh, extract, which is, I always confuse them now, epitalon. But if you were to use the actual peptide, epitalamin. It, it would be 0.1 milligram per day for 10 days. And this is a, this is a, so what the epitalon would be like the full, the, the, the extract full from the, the pineal gland. So in which they were using 10 milligrams and there has been a confusion for years where people were, would use 10 milligrams of the peptides because for many, and me included, I got, you know, I, less than that, we thought that epitalamin and epitalon were the same. They're not. Epitalon is the extract, 10 milligrams, in which you get roughly 0.1 milligrams of oh, the gotcha. peptide epitalamin. So if you have the synthesized peptide, 0.1 milligrams, 10 times, uh, 10 days in a row, that's all you need. Gotcha. Hmm. Um, and that was taken with another one that uh, for the immune system, uh, the, the the extract is timalin, and but the the actual peptide is timogen, and again, 0. 0.1 milligram a day is all you need for ten days. Uh, gotcha. So they work like that, and in Russia, in that institute in St. Petersburg, they found like maybe 30 of them so far or more if you're talking about the extracts but they're all small peptides two three four amino acids but the leading researcher the one who discovered the epitalon uh, Kavinson uh, wrote an article last year where he listed new peptides that uh, had that effect and one of them that he considers to have that effect at the DNA level is that fragment one four of thymosin beta four. It's on the list of his peptides. Okay. That's so awesome. it seems right. that all those very small peptides, and we're talking uh, GHK peptide. Mm-hmm. That's one peptide that Kavinson once in a conference, when asked about it, he said that's one he wished he had discovered because you see that's an amazing, and it's on his list now. Um, so those very small, they have a profound effect because of that, because they work on the epi- the expression of your genes. So there you Versus go. Versus the longer chain ones that are kind of like they're a more, more uh, spectrum and they do a whole bunch of different things versus the tiny ones. And I would way. see them up to a point more therapeutic. The very, very small ones, more like health, Optimization, basically. Gotcha. So you could. Yeah, the ones I've been uh, using extensively have been the BPC one fifty seven. Those ones, they 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 have so broad effects that those two I I I throw in. Let's say I do a anti aging, healthy aging programs. I will use those small peptides. Most of them, the, the program will be based on those very small peptides. But once in a while, over the course of the year, I'll throw in 
short courses of BPC-157 and of time as in beta-4. Mm -hmm. And the alpha uh, There is an article, too, uh, that was written last year on time as in beta-4, and the actual title is something like uh, time as in beta-4, a molecule that gives back to the heart its native uh, state. And and the the guy who wrote the article, it was it, it was refreshing to read that because it's a lab guy. Usually, he did some other studies all on thymus and beta four, on the effect on the heart, great results. But uh, I imagine that guy in his lab and looking, and suddenly he has like a epiphany, where oh, and he writes it in his conclusions, and it's like oh, maybe that peptide has the same effect on other organs. Oh, maybe it's an anti-aging agent, regenerative and everything. We should look into that. <laughs> yeah. No, but you know, it's it's cool to, to read it. It's not a heavy article and I'll, I'll link it. So if some readers want to see it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and basically he realizes what some people we realized like decades ago. Anything in regards to, um, cause the audience that I have got right now, there's a lot of guys on TRT. So they're into, you know, performance, uh, aesthetics, uh, getting muscle, losing body fat, better sense of well being, uh, maybe better sleep. Uh, well, yeah, you are the are... current peptides now that kind of do, um, well, again, it's, you have those who will give you like a short-term answer to those things and those it's more a long-term thing uh, how to explain okay let's say you, you you have bad sleep yeah there are some peptides that will help dsip is a good one uh, even the growth hormone secretagogue, like uh, D DSIP, the DASIP. Delta okay. Sleep Inducing Peptide. But the question is, okay, those will help, but eventually when you stop, it's gonna go back. So the question is, why do, don't you sleep well? And that's what you should look into. Meanwhile, yeah, take the peptides and everything, but never, forget okay why was it bad to begin with yeah, and that's yeah. what you should fix yeah. so you won't depend on those peptides for the rest of your life mm -hmm. same thing um but there could be things you can take in a short course to get a desired effect as an yeah, example of i was mentioning fat loss so i can take this let's say there was this peptide that really accelerated fat loss as i take this for two months and it help, helps me uh, yeah, sometimes, lean out and then I stop, but now I maintain my fat loss as long as my diet's in Many times, there, there are peptides that support fat loss. They are not strong enough that, let's say you 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 stay on your couch with certain Netflix and yeah. eating pizza no. all night. You can take all the peptides you want, you won't lose weight. But if you're on a sound training program, exercising, uh, sound diet, uh, good sleep hygiene, everything that will promote weight loss, you throw in those peptides, they're going to add to the effect. And of course, that's great. Because why would you want to lose X amount of pounds in six months if using the peptides, you could do it in uh, three, four months? Right. You know? Right. Yeah. So the ones for sleep are more something, you know, I... You gone through a period of insomnia for a long time, so I'm going to use this peptide on a temporary yeah. basis just to have a few good nights sleep, help me recover. Once I stop, I'm going to pretty much go back to normal. Mm. Uh, DSIP may be for, I uh, know the DSIP was for sleep. Yeah. Other ones for fat loss that might accelerate a little bit. Anything else in the kind of... Um, well, fat loss, you know, there is a kind of a new one. We don't market it because it is patented, sold in pharmacy. You can get it from your doctor. Is that it, it's... Uh, it's uh, it was first sold for uh, diabetes, type 2. It works amazingly good. But then they realized that, oh, everybody's losing weight when they're on it. So now it was approved in the U.S., I don't know when, in Canada it was approved in November last year for weight loss. 
and it works amazingly good. Basically, it cuts your appetite. You don't feel hungry. Okay, so it's not having any effect on blood sugar or something like metformin. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. It stabilizes your blood sugar. Again, okay. it's a peptide. It doesn't force the effect. Okay. Uh, it's a derivative of actually... That's a funny thing because everybody is like, oh, uh, uh, insulin, insulin, insulin. Well, insulin is not that bad. You know, we have it for a reason. <laughs> Yeah, but it's uh, if you're gonna start manipulating your insulin, it's, by a, it's, a, it's insulin, actually the most better. anabolic hormone we have in the body. You know, it yeah. shuffles sugar in the cells, shuffles amino acids too. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, that that's another theme. Uh, so it's a glucagon. It's called uh, GLP, glucagon-like peptide. And then one and derivates of it. That's why it's patented because it's a derivate of that. But basically, it does first. It will uh, increase amazingly uh, insulin sensitivity. It slows down your uh, digestive tract, so you okay. feel full all the time. That's why you are not hungry. Uh, and I, I, I've used it over the course of three months and it was actually pathetic. I lost like, without doing anything, I lost over 20 pounds. Uh, you call that pathetic? Well, because uh, during that period of time, I went to uh, California, I went to Europe. We were in very nice restaurants and I was not hungry. So let's say I would have a steak, I would have three bites, and that was it. And it was really good. I just couldn't eat it. I was full. Uh, it's crazy like that. It, at the beginning, I would forget to eat. It would be easy to fast on that for three days, and you don't wow. even realize. It's crazy. Uh, a funny thing, I stopped, and it took about, over two months for the effects to go away because after three months it kind of go down so you you stop for a couple of months and i'm about to start again uh, but i thought that i would overeat after that no for like two months i was with a higher but still low appetite and, and I wasn't doing nothing because uh, for some injury in my neck, I couldn't train. I started to train again. Mm -hmm. My diet, I wasn't bes beside the intermittent fasting. I was not doing anything special. And systematically, I was losing one, two pounds a week. No problem. And, and some... Wow. Um, Daniel Stickler, prominent uh, doctor in uh, Texas, he works a lot with peptides. He used to be a weight loss doctor. Uh, he would do bariatric uh, surgery, you know. And after, I think, uh, at the beginning of the 2000s something, he, he said, nah, fuck it, it doesn't work. I, I give up. You know, they lose weight. Then six months after they gained it back, it's not right. It's pointless. Right. And he went into uh, uh, more alternative medicines and all that, and eventually peptides. And but last year he declared he said that's no, that's a game changer. No, he's, he said that peptide, this is it. Hmm. You want to lose weight? That's the one. Was Mpeg. I'm doing publicity. I, I bought shares in the company. No, I didn't. But <laughs> Ozempic, it's called uh, semaglutide. Very, very good to lose weight. It's crazy. Any peptides? And, and the nice, sorry, the nice part about it, it's one injection per week. You don't need to do it every day. Oh, wow. Once a week. Wow. Okay. That's uh, it has, uh, everything's good with this one. Okay. Plus, it's good for the brain. They found out. They're, they're, I think they started some studies on the Alzheimer the, uh, with the uh, Zempic. Oh, for on the cognition, just on cognition? Yeah, or just... be, if you remember a few years ago, they were ta uh, calling Alzheimer uh, diabetes type 3 because they found that Alzheimer people had insulin resistance in the brain. Okay. That could 
be, and it makes sense, could be a cause for at least some cases of Alzheimer's. So now they are looking into that compound because they found anecdotally, they say, oh, fuck, people with Alzheimer improve. So now let's make a study on that. Um, any peptides in uh, having to do with, um, I mean, the other, the other one is losing body fat. So it's a typical, oh. you, know, you can look at it as but, for body Okay, but just, but sorry. Again, sorry to cut you off like that, but that's sad and funny at the same time. There is that a guy I work with, a friend of his, like morbid obesity. Uh, but that's the kind of guy who plays video games all day, like like 450 pounds and the, Ooh, he eats yeah. like shit. And that's just to show you that you you have to put a bit of yourself. Being on Olympic, he was able to gain forty pounds because he, uh, he was taking that weight loss peptide. Yeah, he was able to gain forty pounds. But see, because some cases it's not physiological the problem; it's psychological. So. He would force feed himself. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Even if he wasn't hungry. And if so yeah, you still have to put a bit of yourself, depending what are the the, the, the causes, but many the, some people it's really uh, psychological, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the that relation they have with food. Right. So anyway, uh, sorry. No, it's okay. The question I was asking is just in regards to things like body composition, because I know that the viewers are all interested in that type of thing. What are the what are the current best ones that have that type of effect? The uh, growth hormone secretagogues. So, mm -hmm. and and you'll see the uh, same thing with growth hormone. It's funny because athletes at the beginning, they you know back in the nineties, it was a uh, growth hormone, and but and then they realize that oh well it's not that good because most of the studies done with growth hormone they're done on older people right so they lost a lot of muscles through their life you know at 25 you start to lose muscle mass if you don't train mm -hmm. it's a slow decay so you take somebody who's 60 who lost 30 percent of his muscle mass let's say because of a decrease in testosterone and growth hormone, basically it follows up the same curve. Then you you give him growth hormone, hey, then he's gonna gain back those that muscle mass. And at the beginning, it's gonna be impressive. Like mm -hmm. five, the guy doesn't train nothing. You just give him every day a bit of growth hormone, and he gains like six pounds in the month of muscle. So at least they, oh, okay, okay. So I'll take growth hormone to get six pounds. No, it doesn't work that way. It, it, it will help again. That's that little thing that will help. So if you train, diet is there, proteins, all that, you throw in a bit of growth, you increase your own production. If you're over 40, yeah, that's great. You're, it's going to make a big difference. If you're younger, you're going to see a difference on, on composition, not so much on muscle gain. If you gain muscle while you take growth hormone secretagogue, that's mostly because of your training, not because of that. Yeah. But you'll see an effect on the fat loss, though. It has that effect, that it will increase that fat loss. Okay. Because that's what body composition here, increase muscle, yeah. decrease fat. So. Either way, you, you, you want specifically uh, CJC and Ipermorelin well, combining them. I think it's one of the best combination. Uh, the the very synergetic with very little side effects. You you it's may funny, get any any of these secretagogues I've tried instant insomnia, like within two days, like a yeah. But of, many times, uh, did you try growth hormone? Straight I tried up. actual growth hormone. And did you get insomnia I, from it? Oh yeah. So see, the side effect that, that ins it's not from the peptide; it's from the effect it produces, the increase in growth hormone. So, mm -hmm. if you get side effects from taking growth hormone secretagogue, you won't get side effect from the actual peptide. It's going to be from the increase in growth hormone. Some people are very sensitive to a higher level of growth hormones. 
you said you just said if you're sensitive to the if you okay if I'm getting side effects from a actual GH, but I take a secretagog. Well, which will increase GH. So either you take it or you increase your own. At the yeah. end of the day, you have more, and you are sensitive. Still, I would still have the side effects. Hey? In my case, I would still have the side effect. Yeah, there you go. Because yeah. it comes from the growth hormone, not from right. the peptide okay. itself. Okay. Gotcha. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Outside of things that raise GH, um, anything else from a performance standpoint? No, I, listen, no, I really never. Okay, again, the most effects you see, and that's going to interest your crowd because of TRT, and usually it's people over 50. So, yeah, growth hormone secretagogue, they will see a difference in both muscle uh, retention and fat loss. Uh, oxytocin. You're gonna bring up kiss peptin, aren't you? Oh yeah. Well, kiss peptin is it's not for the the performance itself, yeah. but it's to keep the LH level high, which will keep the production. And and you know some people will say, yeah, but what about the LSH? Yeah, no, you don't need it. as a man. FSH. Uh, FSH. You don't need high FSH levels. You you knew that, right? Uh, yeah. You need it when you're young, but it's mostly women who needs it. And uh, it turns out that in your testicles, your balls, the the two uh, cells groups that make testosterone and spermatozoid, they're all kind of mixed up, mm -hmm. and they, they they talk to each other <laughs> somehow. Uh, you know what what did you do today? Whatever. So they talk to each other and. If one is stimulated, it kind of pushes the other one to work too. So by raising LH, then you have uh, an increase in uh, your own production of testosterone. And it's like, uh, we talked about that before. The, the concept is good. For many people going on TRT, many times they wouldn't need to jump straight up to testosterone. Uh, some of them, you just give them Clomid or, you know, to increase uh, the, the, the production of the testicles, but yeah. it's a drug. I personally and, can't stand the stuff, but yeah. But I, yeah, I, you I, know, I me, I have no problem. I take it and I feel good on it. It depends. But it's not the best solution. No. Nope. Uh, uh, but it does raise LH. And for some people, it kind of control the estrogen levels because some people, they have like way too much. We won't get into that, but. <laughs> um, no, maybe you won't. <laughs> but I'm one of them. You know, I need to control my, my estrogens. Yeah, but so, we've talked offline and I've told you why. Yeah, but that, but you for some me. people, you know, the concept is good. You know, you take that, you don't need to shoot take a pill but you it comes with a bunch of side effects uh kiss peptin no it just raises the lh so i've tried the kiss peptin i'm one of those types that i can't tolerate hcg in any mm. amount i tried uh kiss peptin mm. had exactly the same sides i was getting with hcg but they came on if anything they came on quicker mm-hmm However, I can't say that I really know anyone who is using kiss peptin as their main protocol instead of using HCG. I've I, asked I, around that I, I can't I see. Have, listen, I have some people in the U.S. They buy kiss peptins uh, by cases. We don't sell by cases, but as an expression, they like they no, they swear by it. Okay. Uh, more so because now they cannot get a, 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 a HCG in the U.S. So that they say no, that's fuck good really good again it's right. not okay and that's the thing and you for you too when we talk in a podcast like that most if you give i wouldn't say advice because that's not what we do it's only for educational purposes yeah but everything we say applies would apply to maybe 70 percent of people now you have that bell curve there is always yeah. at the extreme because I'm sure that happened to you. You know, you say, okay, that's good for this, but there's always somebody. Yeah, but I know somebody doesn't work. 
<laughs> yeah, I yeah. know. It's not, Absolutely. but you know, so I've, for the listeners, you know, there are always exceptions and it's not even the best of drugs. It's not good. Hey, some people, they take, uh, they call it a paradoxal effect. They take Valium and it wakes them up. We don't know why. It just right. happened. Hey. Yeah. So no, I'm one of the biggest outli uh, outliers for stuff. Mm. Uh, everything I take, I get sides. Uh, HCG mm. gives me insomnia. Uh, and, and, and and two for and the listeners. It, uh, HCG gives me uh, HCH gives me insomnia. Uh, <laughs> vitamins uh, give me uh, ED. Uh, so I'm, I'm all over the place yeah. and stuff. It's unreal. And and for the listener, I'm not autistic, and I look all over because my camera is down. Danny is there. I don't know where to look. <laughs> so. I <laughs> I told you at the beginning, just look in your camera. I said, yeah, you but it's, it's funny because it's my laptop and that's a big screen. So I'm looking at a black screen. If I look straight up in the camera, I don't know. It's weird. We'll, we'll do better next time. That's it. <laughs> um, so, do you have anything you to, else you wanted to bring up here? Or? Uh, no, I think it's a good uh, first uh thing for podcast introduction uh i encourage your listeners you know that's going to be somewhere you know if they have questions and all that and just to to write them down and that could those questions could become the subjects of uh, our next uh, podcast oh, are you saying that uh, leave some comments below yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know so yeah. you know so guys you heard jf if you got any questions regardless really specific questions one we wanted to find out about couldn't find it online leave it in the comment section mm. below well, you know, no, for, for obvious reason, we cannot yeah. give protocols or stuff like yeah. that. That would become a prescription and yeah. I'm not a medical doctor. I don't want to go to jail. Yeah. So <laughs> that's it. Sometimes I ask him, I'll ask him, you know, what, what dose? And he's like, uh, I don't really want to tell you. Oh, come can, on, just give can, me the dose. I, <laughs> no, well, no, I can't tell you. What I've if it was seen. in a study, no, well, done, yeah, I can tell you, that. okay, in that study, they use that much, or I right. know of people that have used that dosage for that right. condition and got right. good results. I'm just informing you, but right. I cannot tell you that's the dosage, take this, no, that, and I'm not doing that. I right. can't, I just can't. For that Health Canada, like really that's for Health right Canada people beginning. listening right now. Yeah. That's my yeah. disclaimer. <laughs> Jeff, thank you very much. Pleasure as always. <laughs> Guys, again, uh, Jean-François Tremblay from Can Lab. Uh, and it's funny that we're doing a, a podcast like this and because he, he lives like not all that far from my house. Yeah, <laughs> we, we, we should get together again soon for a dinner yeah. or lunch. And... Yeah, we haven't in a while. It's true. Yeah. Um, CanLabSciences.com for anyone interested in uh, purchasing peptides. Um, I'm going to leave the link uh, below. And again, if you want to just save 10% at checkout, you just put in BOSSA10, B-O-S-S-A-1-0, and you'll save 10% uh, on your checkout. Uh, thank you very much. Hey. Uh, see you soon.